Welcome to the Arclight Battery, your power source for all things Warcraft Rumble related. And in today's video, we're going to be giving you the second half of the only tier list you'll ever need. <laughs> so just a little bit ago, I did the leaders. Um, right now, we're going to do the minis. But before I get started, I just wanted to say thank you for watching again. Um, I don't know what you guys are doing, but the support is crazy. Um, I think since my last video, which was posted at the time of this recording 22 hours ago, um, I've gained like 200 new subscribers, um, which sounds small, but it's massive to me. Thank you guys so much. Um, and like I said, I'm just going to keep making videos. Um, let's get into the video. Why should you listen to me? Why should you take my tier list into, an, uh, into account when there are so many others? Well, let's look. I have cleared the entire heroic campaign. You can see by the 150 sigils. I have killed Onyxia. It's currently bugged so that that sigil is not there. Um, and then I'm pretty high in PvP. I'm Dark Iron 2. Uh, 13, uh, 13, 5, 8, 2 honor. Um, all my leaders that I play, so my four, um, which if you're not playing four leaders, you should be, um, are over 4,500. And we're still climbing. Uh, PvP keys are just kind of long at the moment, but I'm sure that'll fix itself once more people start playing. Um, but I've played the game since beta, played since soft launch, I've been paying attention to it since they announced it. I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable about the game. So, without further ado, let's start looking at minis, and I will rank them. So, let's look at the tiers first. If I put something in S tier, um, that means that you should buy it. Uh, buy it every time you see it. Buy the copies, buy the stars. You're going to use this in pretty much everything. Uh, A tier are good units that shine above others, um, but aren't just like blatantly busted. They're good, and you should unlock them and probably get a talent or two for them, but you don't need to worry about maxing them out. Uh, B is units that have situational use um, that you should get and you should get a talent for, and maybe you should put some XP into them, but you won't want to max them out and get all three talents for them. C is like, they're kind of fine. They're worth getting for your uh, collection level and maybe a single talent, um, but they have very niche uses. And D tier is like, I don't know where you would run this, and maybe you shouldn't pick it up other than for collection level. Um, I'm going to go quick here. There are a lot of minis in this game. Um, I won't pick up on all of the talents, However, if you stay tuned until tomorrow, uh, I will have a video out describing all of the talents in the game, as well as which talents you should pick if you're only going to buy one, because I know there's a lot of free-to-play players out there uh, that don't have the luxury of buying multiple talents for a mini. Um, so, without further ado, let's get started. As you see here, I've got two PvP tier lists, or I have two tier lists on my screen. One of them is going to be PvP, that'll be the one on your right, and then the other one will be PvE, which will be the one on your left. So, our first unit here is Abomination. We're going to take a look at them as we uh, see them in the tier list. Abomination is 6 gold. He's a big tank. Um, he's melee. He has an AoE attack, and he has a hook where he hooks range things in. Generally, I don't like... 6 cost and 5 gold cost units are not very good. However, there are a couple that are okay. Uh, I think Abomination is fine. I used him a couple heroic maps. He makes things easier when there are uh, lots of support from ranged units. Um, so in PvE, I'm going to put him in B tier. And then in PvP, I'm going to put him in C tier. I think he's okay. He probably doesn't fit well in a lot, uh, but he might have some niche uses there. Uh, Angry Chickens! Um, that's not much to talk about. They're going in C tier. Let me find them here. Here they are. So, it's just a bunch of chickens. You can, let's just look at these. You can see them here in the video. There's a lot of them, so they do a lot of damage. However, any sort of small AoE, like a stiff breeze, uh, will kill them, which is unfortunate. Uh, but... As you can see here with the Warsong Raider, things that are single target, they'll do well against. Um, 
I just had one of my friends tell me about how they used chickens that were underleveled in a heroic map earlier today to beat uh, the map, and it worked wonders because the uh, mechanic were things that were just like slow single target hits. Um, so niche uses, but not great. Also, they're too small. Their hitbox doesn't hit a Nixia. So I don't know why they haven't fixed that yet, but they're definitely C tier. Um, possibly D, but C tier is fine. PvP, they're going in D tier. Um, Chain Lightning's too prevalent in the meta. Arcane Blast kills them. Um, there's not a lot going for chickens. Okay, let's move on to Arcane Blast. Uh, this is a AoE spell. This, uh... Deals elemental damage, it's cycle, but it starts at one gold and does some damage. Two gold does a little more damage, then three and four, just like that. Um, the spell has some niche uses. Um, it's okay in PvE. It was better when Thalnos was good. Uh, he is not. So I would place this in probably B tier. It probably has some niche uses. Some people might play it in Janalus, and they'll definitely play it if they're playing Thalnos, even though he's pretty bleh. But... It's decent. Um, I'm going to put it in B as well in PvP. It has some better uses there, uh, just because of the nature of defending different pushes and being able to do that with a spell is good, but it's okay. Next up, we have Banshee. Let's find Banshee real quick. She's probably at the top. Isn't she? Nope, she's right here. Okay, so this is a four gold unit that will seek out and possess, so mind control, uh, an enemy that's close to her and then you will get that unit to fight for you. This unit is fantastic in specific places. So there are a lot of maps where you'll never play this character. Um, she just doesn't do anything. But there are other maps that make the entire uh, entire map trivial. So let's back out real quick. I want to show you something. Um, Blackrock over here. So this first boss is super difficult. Um, its mechanic is that it has golems that when you kill, they shatter and deal damage and split into more golems. If you mind control one, which you can for some strange reason, you get the golem and the tiny golems it summons, and it just trivializes the map. It's such an easy map if you have Banshee. Um, and for that reason, we're going to go ahead and put her in A tier for PvE. Um... Lots of maps she's good on. You'll be able to play them and figure out. You'll come in contact with just like a giant tank, like a molten giant that you can't overcome very easily, and just be like, hold on, I have Banshee, let me take that. Um, PvP, I'm going B tier. She's really good if you can deploy her in your base in that little safety box and possess something that's attacking your base, but other than that, she's not great. She'll generally die before anything like that happens. She's very squishy, and she has to see something, lock on, channel her ability, and then rush to him. So, okay. Um, Bat Rider. Uh, we're, we might start going a little quicker here. We need to really pace through this, I believe. Where is Bat Rider? Bat Rider. Um, Bat Rider, we're going to go in B tier. Uh, very good on a couple maps, but not many. Um, I actually used her on Devil Sword Queen Heroic, even though she's only level 17. Um, she helped a lot. There's just one side that spawns a bunch of raptors, and she clears them up easy peasy. Um, definitely worth having. Definitely worth putting a talent into her. Um, good overall unit. Um, I'm going to put her in C tier in PvP. I don't think she's great. Um, she's just very specific against things, and that's just... The meta right now is not great for her. Okay, moving on to Blizzard. Blizzard is up top, I believe. Yep. So, Blizzard in PvE is probably A tier. Uh, works really well with Jaina builds. It works really well with just builds that uh, want to support your troops because this thing slows and even freezes if you have the right talent. Um, it's fantastic. does a good amount of damage. Um, I'm going to also put this in A in PvP. The talent that makes it freeze everything in place is just fantastic. Uh, you'll love it. Uh, it's great pretty much every time you play it. It has a large AoE, so it'll hit multiple things. Moving on, we have Chain Lightning, which is down here, I believe. Yep, right here. So, Chain Lightning, PvP is probably B tier. It's okay. It cleans up squads of squishy things really well, um, but 
a lot of the times it is just useless. In Jaina, it's probably better. In Thalnos, where you can cast it twice with rever uh, Reverberate, I believe is a talent. Yep, Reverberation. It's awesome, but I don't know. They're, they're just better spells in the campaign. However, in PvP, and people might not like this, might be controversial, Chain Lightning's S tier. It's so good. The ability to stun things is fantastic. The ability to use it to deny their kobold is fantastic. The ability to knock things out of stealth with it, uh, with it is fantastic. It kills harpies on even level. A bunch of content creators are talking about how sappers are just the best thing since sliced bread. Um, this kills them for even cost. A lot of YouTubers are playing sappers with smoke bomb so they can run their sappers past everything. So if you can get them to do that before you chain lightning, you get a gold advantage from it. It's just super solid. Um, it's in, I believe, all but one of my PvP decks. So you're not going to play it in every single one. It's not that good, but it is very good in the meta right now. Um, cheat death. Moving on. Let's see. Where are you? Undead or down? Yep, right here. So, cheat death just makes things not die for a little bit. Um, uh, it's C tier. Um, it's the only reason it's not D tier for me personally in PVE is that it doesn't, uh, or it's it's really good with Murkai. Using a big Murkai push with Murlocs, um, preventing them from dying once they get to the boss, especially when bosses have AoE abilities most of the time, is just fantastic. Normally, if you're leveling it up alongside your uh, Murkai and your minions in your deck, and you use it, the boss will die before this expires. Uh, PvP, I'm also just going to put C tier. Um, it's good in certain builds, um, but it kind of feels win more. I've only ever had it played on me a couple times, and every time it was played on me, I was kind of already losing or in a really bad spot. So I guess it can close out the game quicker, but I don't necessarily like it. Okay, next we have Core Hounds. Um, these guys, I think, are terrible. In PvE, I'll put them in C tier. Um, maybe behind a Tyrion that heals them is fine. They resurrect each other when they die, if the other one is still alive. But they stop attacking and have to channel to do so. Um, they're just too expensive for what they do. They're not great. In PvP, I'm going to put them in C tier as well. Just not super solid. Okay, moving on. We have Dark Iron Miner. This guy is uh, just two gold unbounding it that will mine gold for you. Uh, in PvE, I think he is a B tier. Um, he's good. He's not required. Um, I used him in a couple things. There are a couple maps that have gold nodes far away that you can use this guy to get to if you really need to. Um, but he doesn't do much else. He can gain armor, armored from a talent or have fury, which makes him a decent DPS if he has a tank in front of him. But he's just okay in PvE. Now in PvP... Man, it's so hard not to put him in S. He's just so good. I think that he's going to be high A. This guy is fantastic. Holy cow. Um, so, personally, I play the Fury Talent with him. And like I said, there's a video coming tomorrow where I'll get into talents and which one you should buy if you're only going to buy one. But in PvP, this guy instantly gets played to take Mining Nodes. He, uh, You can drop him to take Treasure Chests. You can... Um, you can drop him like a quill bore to distract something. And most of the time, if this guy roams free and he takes all the gold, they just ignore him after that because he's already done his job. But if you can get a tank to their base before this guy gets here, with the Fury Talent, he will go to town on that base and he will absolutely wreck it. It's so fun to watch. Uh, people just leave the two gold miner alone and then he just absolutely dismantles their base. Um, great unit in PvP. I play him in, I believe, three of my decks. Uh, as well, so very solid. Next, we have Troll. Da -da -da -da. Where is Troll? Here we go. So, you get this starting out. Uh, I'm gonna put him in B tier. I used him for a while. Um, he's just single target, long range, high damage, uh, pretty solid. Um, <laughs> There are better ranged options, I feel like. However, if you are playing a horde leader, some of the horde slots are hard to match. So he's he fits in very well there. He does what he does decently well 
well enough to take the slot of one of those Valor slots, because Horde units are not very strong at the moment. And for that reason, he's also going to be B in PvP. I play him in my Sneed PvP deck. Um, Rind is a problem for Sneed, it feels like, and this guy just kind of helps with that. Moving on, we have Deep Breath. I'm just going to put it in S tier um, for both categories. It's kind of hard to judge, and most people won't have it because you have to kill on XC to do it. Um, but it looks like this. It summons a beam of fire from the sky and kills things. It's great, honestly. Um, but you're not going to have it for the campaign. So maybe we'll put it in D tier for the campaign. Nah, we'll keep it in S tier. But you're not going to have it for the campaign. So, I don't know. S tier in PvP. I play the talent that gives things resist. It's fantastic. It kills things at a long range. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Next is Defias Bandits. Um... They are stealth, they stun things when they come out of stealth, and then they go back stealth, and they stun things again. So, these guys in PvE are A. Uh, they're a one gold cycle unit, so they can cycle back to what you're looking for. Um, they also have a talent that lets them get bonus gold or poison, um, so super solid. In PvP, I'm going to put them in A tier as well. Um, one gold, get bonus gold from chests if they go uncontested. Um, stealth, good all around. Um, next we have Drake in PvE. So, going straight to A tier. I'm also going to put it in A tier in PvP. Um, and I'll talk about it here in just a second. PvE is great. It's just a flying AoE frontal cone uh, elemental damage that spawns whelp eggs. Whelps are fantastic, by the way, um, as it flies. Perfect for all of your flying needs. Um, A, it's really good to clog up um different paths with well bags um as well as defending uh and supporting your ground push very good very good unit uh earth elemental uh i'm gonna put it in b for pve okay he disappeared um this might be controversial a lot of people really like him um and he disappeared again come on um you know he is very good my only issue with him in PvE, though, is a lot of the time you're needing him to tank something and stand there and actually tank it. If it's not a tower or the boss, he's going to walk right past it because he's a siege unit. Um, so, kind of rough on him. He is high B, low A, um, but just not really exactly what I'm looking for. And he is right here. I'll pull him up so you can see him. Um, PvP, gonna put him in A. Um... You can play him in Sneed, uh, you can play him in a couple other things. He's not bad. Um, same thing, he's just a quill bore, basically, if you want to tank armored things. He's he's good for an additional gold. Next, we have Execute. Where's Execute? Execute is down. Okay, so, this is hard. So, Execute deals damage based on the enemy's health. It ignores armor, it ignores resist. Um... So it'll do a percentage. It does more percentage the higher level your execute is above them. It's super solid. Um, but mainly it's solid because of the talent that gives things bloodlust. Um, without that, it's probably... Man. This is tough. It's probably low B. Um, it's great to help chunk through those big tanky molten giants and things of that nature. Um, but it's 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 good. Uh, PvP, I'm gonna put it in C tier. Not great. I I wanted there to be a Jaina build that controlled the field and just executed their base when you could, and there still might be one that I haven't really played with it. Um, but from how I see it now, probably C tier. Everyone's playing squishy things, and you're not trying to play three gold to deal 50% of a safe pilot's health. That just seems silly. Okay, moving along, we have Fire Elemental. Let me find him here. All right, so this guy is resistant AoE tank. Uh, I think he's probably B tier. Um, you can support him really well with Shaman, give him armored, and heal him, which is fantastic. Uh, and for that reason, he's probably going to go in B as well in PvP. Um, a lot of people can use him to death ball, which is where you just like make a swarm of things around him and protect them all. Uh, so like, give him armored, like I said, heal him, use safe pilots, chain lightnings, things like that to protect uh, and help him out. Next we have Firehammer. Where's Firehammer? 
a uh, good unit has fury so as it attacks it starts attacking faster and faster as you can see here um it's very niche though um i think it's low b it's still not worth um you know putting in c tier uh for that reason pvp i think it's c four is a lot of gold especially when you're playing pvp you might not have all the gold control and so they might be able to answer it better than normal uh let's go to flame walker okay we have oh my goodness so first off he's a bombard tank uh bombard unit so he can only hit ground units he has a really long range though in pve i'd say he's probably high c tier in pvp I think he's probably D. He's just four gold. He doesn't do enough for what he does. Uh, it's moving right along. We're going to speed through a little quicker here, I think. Footmen. Uh, they are five gold for four tanks. Um, shredding out their health pool is really good. Makes things like Tyrion and Holy Nova even better. Um, PvE, they're probably higher. Probably B tier. Um, oh, man. C tier for PvP. Nah, we're gonna go low B. Just I play them in two of my builds, but I'm running very specific builds for them that require deep breath. Um, and I think without deep breath, they're probably not very good. They're probably like low C maybe. Um, but once you get deep breath, they become a very tanky unit. Um, so I'll put them in B for that. Uh gargoyle. Let's see. Gargoyle, gargoyle. Where are you, gargoyle? Here we go. So he's a siege unit, which means he will fly past enemies um, and just really hit the base super hard. Um, he is A tier. In, well, I think he's B tier in PvE, honestly. Um, sometimes you just don't want things to fly past enemies um, and hit the boss. You want things to fight. Um, I think he's A tier in PvP. Um, he's very good in PvP. Um, he actually takes the place of sappers a lot. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, sappers are cute and fun, but data chain lightning, this guy for two more gold, you can just sit them and let them alone while they deal with what else you're doing on the map, especially if you started some other pushes, uh, and then you just drop him casually on the side and let him go fight another tower or just have him push slowly up towards the enemy base. Um, he's, he's very good. Definitely worth, uh, playing. Next we have Ghoul. Where's Ghoul? Here he is. I actually like this unit a lot more than it shows. He's only uncommon for me. Um, but in PvE, I think he's B tier. Probably low B, but still B tier. Um, for two gold, he's very tanky, especially when he helps kill something. He'll eat the corpse afterwards and heal. Uh, and then his talent gives him armored, which is just sick. It's so good. Um, I'm actually going to throw him in B for PvP too. I don't think many people play him at all. Uh, but I think he fits an undead slot if you need to. Um, decently solid. And then we have a Null Brute. Let's find him real quick. Um, okay, so you get him at the start of the game. He's a tank. I'm going to put him in C tier. He does an AoE, but I don't think he's very good. Um, I have the uh, talent that reduces cost by one. It gains a cycle, but normally he costs three gold. I think he's okay. He's nothing special. Uh, I'm going to put him in D tier for PvP. I don't know why you would ever play him. You don't need AoE on your tank generally. Um, it is good, but I mean, not on that. Um, next we have Goblin Sappers. Everyone's gonna crucify me for this take. Okay, so they ignore everything. They run past every single thing and just run and explode on a base. They will kill a base by themselves or a tower rather and do a lot of damage to a base. Um, but they're really squishy. As you can see in here, that tower shot almost kills one. So, Chain Lightning, Safe Pilot, any sort of AoE, a Stiff Breeze will kill them. Um, they are, like, bottom of C tier in PvE. Sorry, community. I know you love them. Um, and then PvP, I think they're B tier. They can be good in the right circumstance. Um, but that right circumstance is your opponent not playing Chain Lightning or being aware that you're playing Sappers. Um, so, you're going to get a lot of people that don't understand what's happening almost all the time, but you're probably not going to get players that know what they're doing any person of the time. Um, if you can create enough drama on the map and other things happening where you can send them off on their way, then maybe, but in that key, you should probably just put a gargoyle in that lane instead. 
Um, sorry. Okay, Griffin is A tier. I love this unit. Two gold cycle, get it at the start of the game, has a talent that makes its range increase by three, uh, which makes it uh, more valuable. It can attack a Drake from further away, so it gets in like an extra hit, I think. Um, it outranges a lot of different things with this talent. It's super solid. So A tier for PvE, even without the range talent, super solid. But in PvP with the range talent, it really shines. I'm going to put it in A tier unless it just drops off the map like the last time. Um, high A, um, very solid. I think I play it in every single one of my decks, but that's just because it's so versatile. It fits the flying slot. It's cycle. Um, three range is fantastic. Okay. Next we have Harpies. Harpies, Harpies, Harpies. Where are the Harpies? Here they are. Okay, they're a squad of melee units. Um, I'm going to put them in A tier for PvE. Just amazingly solid. Well, what am I putting in S tier? Let's see. You know, for PvE, I think I'm going to put them in S tier. They are just... Oh my gosh, they are the highest DPS in the game. Um, if they get to a boss and you distract it with an Earth Elemental or a Quibor, they're going to shred it. It's just super fantastic. Unfortunately, though, for PvP, not great. So, on even level, Chain Lightning, the two gold spell, will kill these. So, they're very squishy. Um, for that reason, I'm going to put them in, like, low B, maybe high C, but we'll cut them so I can give them high B. Or, rather, low B. Um, Say Pilot kills them, Chain Lightning kills them. Pyromancer kills them, Drake kills them, any AoE kills them. Um, they're just really squishy. So when your opponent gets to respond, they're not amazing. Okay, moving on. Harvest Golem. Harvest Golem, Harvest Golem. There you are. Um, he is going in low C. He's not great. He resurrects. Um, fantastic unit. Next we have Huntress. Oh, I'm going to catch flack for this one too. Where is Huntress? Oh, she's in the army. Okay. Huntress, five gold, um, fast, attacks ricochet, um, pretty solid, but she's kind of squishy. Like, she's not terribly squishy, but I don't know. There's something about her that I just don't like. I recognize that she's good. I'm going to put her in high B tier in PvE. There's a case for A tier, especially in PvE. Um, she clears things well, but she's kind of expensive. Um, I'm going to put her in low B in, well, okay, I'll put her in high B for PvP. I think she's fine. Um, she costs a lot, which isn't a terrible issue, but if you place her in the wrong spot and make a mistake, the five gold is going to cost you. Like, if you run her under the bridge randomly to, like, support your ground charge instead of taking her over the bridge, which I've seen people do. You can just drop a safe on it and kill it before it runs past the bridge. So it's kind of rough. Um, yeah, Cobalt, S tier. Uh, he gets you gold, money, money, money. Absolutely. Uh, let's go to Living Bomb. Okay, this unit, everybody hates. Worst spell in the game. I think it's B tier. And I'll tell you why, because it does something very specific. It takes out large groups of enemies, and it also puts tons of damage onto a boss if there is a large group of enemies around that boss. So it does what it does well, and when it is useful, it's going to do what it does better than any other mini in the game. So, B tier for me. Um, however, PvP is D tier. It's pretty trash. <laughs> um, let's go on to Meat Wagon. Um, a tier in PvE, it has a talent that makes its uh, range plus two, which makes it outrange everything in the game. It can damage towers and Onyxia and bosses from outside of their aggro range. Uh, it's very key in that. Um, let's go... Let's go C tier in PvP. Bombard sucks, unless it's doing something very specific, which is damaging towers or... Um, or bosses outside of their range. So, not great in PvP. Sorry. Uh, Molten Giant. D tier PvE, D tier PvP. Um, I'll pull him up just so we can see him. Um, if I can find him real quick. He costs 6 gold. He doesn't do anything for it. He's single target. He hits really hard and he has a ton of health. Um, but there are ways to counter him. 
Sorry, Molten Giant. Oh man, we're on back to back these. Um, Beastmaster, where is that? I think that's in the deck, so I was experimenting with it earlier. Yep. Mountaineer. Uh, he's a ranged damage dealer and has a bear tank. He is not good for six gold. Please do not play this unit. Um, I'm sorry. Murlocs. Um, B tier for PvE. Pretty solid. I think B tier for PvP too. Let's pull them up real quick. They should be right here at the top. Are they in the deck? They are in the deck. Um, they're two gold, so they cycle well. They're pretty ranged. Um, so, you know, they'll help take out flying units and different things. Um, and they help you get back to what you actually want to play because they're cycled. Pretty solid. Um, Necromancer, I think is A tier for PvE and B tier for PvP. Um, here, I'll show you him real quick. So, he summons skeletons, which is really nice. Um, this is a weird graphic of Gargoyle, because he doesn't do that anymore. But, anyway, um, summoning skeletons, and then he resummons them after they die after a short time, which is really nice. Um, A for PvE, B for PvP. He just dies too much in PvP. Safe pilot kills him, and that's a gold disadvantage, so not great. Um, but... Not horrible either. Uh, Ogre Magi. I think this is a D tier unit in both PvE and PvP. And let me tell you why. Uh, well, you know, C in PvE. Because he, for, he bloodlusts something that he's next to. And for 5 gold, I want him to be good without having to support another unit. Um, that's just my stance on it. I don't think he's very good. I know that people have played him in some heroic maps and have liked him. But in PvE, like I said, he's going to be better because you can use him to support something. Okay, Plague Harvester, I think, is probably B. He hits really hard for two gold. Let's find him real quick. Uh, but he is Bombard, so he doesn't hit air units. But man, he hits hard, and he poisons too. Um, probably C in PvP. Just squishy. I mean, it's two gold, so it's not bad. But he's also Bombard. Um, Polymorph is B tier PvE. There's not a lot of uses that you'll find for it. And probably high B in PvE. Or rather PvP as well. Let's scroll up here so you can see it. It is nice. A lot of people don't know this. Um, but it gives... I believe... I thought it said it before. But it should... Here, yes. So it... Strips their defensives, so it takes their armor and resistance away, but it also makes them vulnerable. So vulnerable in this game means that they take extra elemental damage, um, which is awesome. Um, as you can see there, just totally sheeps the, uh, the tank and the chickens can kill it. The one downside is if you sheep flying units, they're still going to be flying. So, yeah. Uh, Prowler, A tier for PvE, A tier for PvP. Prowler's solid, he's fast, he does damage, he's a tank, three gold, he's stealth uh, with the talent, super solid, definitely recommend picking up. Pyromancer is A tier, PvE, um, probably B tier PvP, kind of squishy, but still good. She has so many uses in PvE, let's pull her up real quick so you can see her. It is one of the minis I regret not leveling up as much as I was playing through the campaign. I went back and leveled her later, but she's still very good. She has a kind of a short range, but not too bad. Uh, Quillbor, S tier PvE. S tier PvP. Let's see, he's in the deck. I was just goofing around, messing with Trogger earlier. Um, he's solid. He is the definition of distraction. You just put him behind something and he will turn them around and tank. He's resistant, he's too gold, he's unbound, he is awesome. One of the best units in the game, been preaching about him since before I even had access to the game. He is awesome. Um, Raptors are A tier. Ooh, no one saw that coming. For both PvE and PvP, um, let's pull them up to, they should be near the top. They are uh, kind of like Arcane Blast, where you play them for one, then two, then three, and you get one Raptor, two Raptor, three Raptors. Um, but the good thing is they don't die to Chain Lightning. They're actually kind of tough, um, and you can also just use them as a cycle unit. So if you want to just play one of them, you can pay one gold and move along to your next thing, which makes them super versatile. Very good. Um, safe Pilot, S-tier PvE, S-tier PvP. There's just, I mean, come on. She's so good. Um, is she in this? 
build. Yeah, okay, here she is. So you place her on the map, and she will take a delay, and then she'll come in, and she'll land, dealing damage, and then she has a elemental blast attack with this AoE. She's so good in PvE, she takes chests, um, that's why she's good in PvP too. She, I mean, she's just awesome. Taking chests and controlling the board with her in PvP is fantastic. Uh, next we have Frost Wolf Shaman, which I'll put in B tier for PvE, and probably B tier for PvP too. Um, Frost Wolf Shaman makes it to where she heals and does a lightning attack, so she's kind of a support. She doesn't do a lot of damage, but she does healing, so it makes up for it. And she has a talent that makes her give armor to something, which you can use to death ball like a fire elemental. Um, it's nice. It's not amazing, but it's not bad either. Let's see. The next unit is Skeletal Party. I'm going to put in C tier in both PvE and PvP. Uh, let's find them real quick. They are a four gold cost, I believe. Yeah. They're unbalanced, so they're kind of nice, but four gold is a lot for some squishy skeletons, honestly. They all that a safe pilot to most AoE. Not Chain Lightning, but most other things. Um, not worth having, in my opinion, maybe in some weird Baron build that eats skeletons, but not great. Uh, oh man, Skeletal Party. Not Skeletal Party, I think it's just skeletons. Um, I'm actually going to go C tier PvE, B tier PvP. These guys, they're awesome. There's three of them, but they have a talent that puts it up to five, deploying the army meeting stone or tower. Awesome. Uh, super good. Great DPS when coupled with a quill bore. Um, when taking a tower, you can do a bunch on a PvP map, which is why they're B in PvP. Um, and then when they respond to that and they don't have any gold left, you can use four gold to take a tower with quill bore and these guys pretty quickly. So definitely good. Uh, smoke bomb. Mm. I'm going to put it in D tier PvE. I don't think it's very good. It just gives things stealth. Uh, Re-stealthing my teams could be decent. So maybe we'll bump it up to C in PvE. I could see a case for that. Um, PvP, probably B tier. Same thing. Stealthing my units is awesome. Um, but it doesn't do much else than that. Um, spiders. Let's see here. Let's move this just a little bit, shall we? Okay, Spiders, they are going to be C tier, PvE, D tier, PvP, they are just not as good as I want them to be, uh, they do poison damage, which is kind of cool, but other than that, not fantastic, you know, they're vulnerable, I believe, yep, which means they take more elemental damage, I believe, yep, right there, so you can see, not fantastic. Two gold isn't a lot, but they also don't do a lot. Don't have Torin. A in PvP, A in PvE. I do like this unit. I don't actually play it. I don't think I have very much XP on it at all, but it does seem very good. All right, Vultures. Let's find them real quick. Right here. So these guys are actually solid. I think these are probably C tier pvp but b tier pve i think these guys are b tier pve because they're one gold they can cycle the good units that you're looking for and they still have to be dealt with they multiply if they kill things or help kill things which is solid um next we have uh, da -da -da -da, war song raiders which are the most trash unit in the game they are so bad look i need 2100 experience to level it up which is not a lot um Man, they are D tier all around. I don't have anything nice to say about them, so I'm not going to say anything at all. Uh, after that, we have Warsong Raider, which is one of my favorite units in the game. Very good unit. Um, super good talents. Uh, hits very hard. Fast unit. I think it's A tier. I'm going to put it in A tier for PvP as well. Then we have everyone's favorite overpowered unit, the Whelp Eggs. Um, I will talk more about why this is OP in the talent selection, but uh, the talent selection video um, tomorrow, stay tuned for that. But for right now, just know that they are S tier in PvE and S tier in PvP. Um, well, man. Okay, the community is going to be happy with me because I'll put them low S tier. I actually don't run them in any of my PvP decks right now, even though I recognize they are very good. Um, Chain Lightning kills them. I run Deep Breath in two of my builds, which also kills them. I'm not sure if that's a bug, but it will break the egg and kill them. Maybe because the egg spawns away from Deep Breath's path. 
uh, or where the egg originally was. I don't know, um, but that's how it works. So I don't run into much issue when I face them most of the time. Um, but yeah, S tier for sure, for sure, for sure. Pick them up, buy them. Uh, Worgen, A tier in PvE, A tier in PvP. This guy has a talent that makes his ambush damage do more. Um, he is unbound stealth. When he hits something out of stealth, there's a bunch of damage to them. So he will one-shot things, generally. Um, used to snipe a couple things uh, here and there in PvE campaigns. Used to get chests and snipe things in PvP. All around a solid unit. Um, super good. But yeah, there's my tier list. Um, once again, let me know what you guys think. Uh, argue with me in the comments. Tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, tell me why I'm right. Tell me anything you want. Um, if you have questions about anything you've heard here today, uh, please let me know in the comments below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I super appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, keep an eye out for the talent video that's coming. Um, it's definitely going to be designed to help free-to-play players, um, where if I had to pick one talent, I would choose one. That's going to be in that video. Um, so yeah, thanks again so much for watching. Have a great day, guys. Bye.